Now, putting their business relationship to the test in the den are life partners, Paul Maiden and James Findlay. They took the decision to move from the rat race to the wilderness and once there, were inspired to create gourmet chocolate. We are as far north and as far west as you can possibly go on the mainland. Everything we do is ten times harder than doing it anywhere else. We're really passionate, and we haven't lost any of that passion, even when we're exhausted. It's our life. Hello, I'm Paul and this is James. We're the founders of Coco Mountain. Uh, we're here today to present an opportunity for the Dragons to invest £80,000 in our rather remarkable, unique chocolate business and our world-famous hot chocolate drink. What percentage? For 15%. We founded the business in 2006 and we're located in the far northwest of Scotland by Cape Wrath, the most beautiful place in Britain. Uh, stunning mountains, glorious beaches, lochs, wildlife, it's spectacular. And our goal with Coco Mountain was to create a business that matched that scenery and create a paradise in heaven. Our aim was very simple. We wanted to use only the finest ingredients. It was ethical, it was fairly sourced, and taste meant everything. We did it ourselves 100% and we did it our way. We have an online business where we sell our, our products online to customers all over the world. We also supply, um, we also, excuse me, we also supply um, a lot of our, our bars to independent retailers and at the moment we've just secured a larger premises of 350 square metres, which we'll be moving to in the next few weeks. And this is based an hour from our existing location, but one hour north of Inverness, still in the, in, in the northwest highlands. Uh, the hot chocolate market in the UK alone is worth £120 million, and we feel that the competition is poor, by and large. We think our product could be a major success in the UK and abroad, and even taking a small share of that market, we can generate significant products, uh, profits from this product alone. Thank you for listening to our pitch. Just to maybe comment that as times are tough out there, people need the best hot chocolate. Handmade chocolate from the Highlands is the package on offer from slightly nervous entrepreneurs Paul Maiden and James Findlay. Ladies first. Oh, hey, lovely. Thank you very much. They're hoping for a tasty £80,000 in return for 20% of their culinary company. Thank you very much. But will their products pass the taste test of the notoriously hard to please foodie dragon, Sarah Willingham? Guys, when you talk about where you live and where you produce this, your eyes light up. I mean, it, and it, it, it's almost like you can taste it in the chocolate. It's real magic. It's like the traditional Italian hot chocolate. When you go to Italy, this is what you get served, and it's fantastic. We have masses of customer testimonials as to how good this product is. It's very, very different from, I suppose, the kind of hot chocolate that most of us grew up with, which was mostly milk. This is pretty much like molten chocolate. I have no objection to that whatsoever, uh, but it, it is a very different drink from milk with a bit of flavouring. The key is this. This is the, uh, this is the hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... I taste that. It's going to be very bitter, isn't it's it? It's not going to be too bitter, actually. But what it is, is very concentrated. And then that's dissolved into milk. It's just dissolved into milk, and you have a proper hot chocolate made at home. That is rest right on my pat. I love that. Thank you. Okay. The first hurdle cleared. Praise all round for the chocolate. Oh, wow. With even a usually poker-faced Peter Jones declaring himself a fan. Now for the small matter of that remote Scottish location. I've been here 
It's in Durness, the, yeah. the Balaknal Craft Village. That's right, yeah. That's around the corner from Tung. Yeah. Well, it's an hour away from Tung. Well, yeah. that's just around the corner in, yeah. in, in that context. I've yeah. been there, yeah. Yeah. OK, it used to be a sort of a, it used to be a kind of a commune, didn't it? Well, what happened was the hippies moved in. Yeah. And then after the hippies were kind of ejected, uh, an initiative was taken to form a craft village there. And so our, our environment is us and lots of other little businesses who are artists and craftspeople. I've been there yeah. and it's a lovely, lovely play place for people who want to kind of step out of the world. Um, it's, it's, it's a diabolical place to set up business. What were the numbers like for the last 12 months we in terms of sales? Over, mm, our sales were, uh, um, our gross sales were 260,000. OK. And the profit, the, gr uh, the net gross profit was 183. Ha OK, gross profit 183, yeah. And the net profit, 100, uh, sorry, 50, 57,000. 57,000. And that is after after paying yourselves a, 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 a normal salary? Yes. Um, OK, so you've got a business, but that is after nine years. So why do you think that in the last nine years you haven't turned that into a significant business? It's about production. We live in a part of the country where there are 200 people spread out over 200 square kilometres. Uh, we can't recruit enough people. Um, and hence we can't grow the business. We have um, turned away countless requests for us to supply businesses. Do you have any, any, any concrete orders? We've never been able to accept orders. We've always said no. If you imagine the situation where you have far more demand than you can supply, the last thing you want to do as a business is promise more than you can deliver. No, 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 but let, let's put this into context. It's, it's, I mean, I, you know, I love the Scottish story and so on, but you've already told us that the, the only consequence of you being in, in, in this beautiful part of Scotland that you're in um, <clears throat> is that you can't find anyone to help you with the production. Um, we supply I local... mean, this sounds like a business prevention department. Nick Jenkins expresses concerns about the infrastructure available to their company. Has the remoteness of the operation become a sticking point for a company clearly going places? Does it frighten you to move back down nearer us? No. No, not at all. For the last five years now, we've been looking for a reasonably located, much larger production unit that we can move into. And we've now found them. It took us a long time because we wanted to be close enough to our base because we will always call that home. But the thing is, if I was to invest in you today, I've got a funny feeling that next time we'd meet, I'd be in my 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be saying, hey, we've done really well, we've moved it really fast, where are we? 320 no. grand. I can, I can see where you're coming from, but as I say, we've just, we're just about to sign a lease on what was a call centre. Yeah, but if it takes you seven years to sign a lease on a premises, it would worry me when your next meeting with Waitrose would be, it'd be called a different name. The inability of the gourmet chocolate entrepreneurs to scale up the business quickly enough has spooked the ever ambitious Peter Jones. And it's made Deborah Meaden question how big the business could ever get under Paul and James's direction. In my life, I've had to move places I really haven't particularly wanted to go, but I've had to go because that's what I needed to do to grow the business. And I do honestly think location. I know you think you're sorting it. Half an hour north of Inverness, you'd, you'd say was still too remote to produce efficiently. Or is it more the sales and marketing element? I think, or... it's, the, I think it's the sales. The truth of the matter is you have to knock on doors. Yeah. And, you know, somebody has to go there and stand in front of somebody and show it to them and get them to taste it and tell your lovely story. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing wrong with saying, I want it as a lifestyle business. But when you're looking for an investment, it, 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 it starts becoming a whole different dynamic, you know, an investor's going to say, well, OK, well, what have you got that's really going to drive this business forward? And you've got to admit that the story you've just told us, it's a lovely story, it's a great thing to do, but it, there's nothing in there that says you're going to go, right, now's our moment. Is that...? No, we're driven. Yeah. <laughs> don't look I think, it! I think we're just... What do you mean, we don't, we don't look it? Yeah, we need a bit of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. Paul and James are struggling to get their commitment across to the Dragons. Will artisan food lover Sarah Willingham convert her compliments for the cocoa into cash? 
Guys, I'm a bit sad. I am because I feel like what you're asking and what you're doing with the move to Inverness and everything, you're kind of compromising actually the real heart and soul of, of what you've produced. My gut feeling for you guys is to stay where you are, focus on trying to find somebody who can produce this for you. We've found that person. Fantastic. And then sell it. It's just not an investment for me, so I'm afraid I'm out. Paul and James, I think what you guys need is a local investor. Somebody you could work with and you can get men mentoring with and somebody that has connections across the country. And I'm not that person. I'm afraid I'm not going to be your investor today, guys. So I'm out. I think that the chocolate is fantastic. The little sip of that was lovely. Did you enjoy the chocolates themselves? The cho these chocolates, I've just eaten them, apart from those two, but lovely. So, guys, whilst your product is brilliant, my sense of urgency is we, we, we run at different paces. I think working, we, we'd, we'd struggle. I wish you every best of luck with this, because I think the product is great. Thank you. But I'm not going to invest in you. I'm going to say that I'm out. As a fourth dragon bows out, the temperature in the den is rising. And Nick Jenkins is feeling far from chilled out about this brand's potential for growth. This is a really, really difficult market to crack. And you have created a big, a big obstacle. I want people who are hungry to, to, to do business. You've just been turning it away for the last nine years. What this tells me, unfortunately, is that I shouldn't be backing you. We've been looking for expansion of Not production very hard. capacity. You we know, can't... We, a hungry person... There are a limited number of factories available that's which why, are accessible to us. That's why people don't set up businesses up there. Well, that's why we didn't set up a business up there initially with the aim of growing it into a global brand. But that's what's happening. It's been a phenomenon. We have, we have customers from all over the world. Not much of a phenomenon, is it? I mean, that's, that's, it's an underwhelming phenomenon. So I'm afraid, for, 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 for all of those reasons, wish you the best of luck, but I'm out. OK. So Paul and James leave the den and prepare for that 500-mile journey home with Dragon approval for their product, but none of their hunger to invest. Tried. Yes. They've produced a great product. Fantastic. Fantastic. Did you like that chili and lemongrass? It's a quarter of that bar. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a great product, but <clears throat> they obviously went there for a lifestyle reason and they haven't got over that. Together, I think we're a great team. And when we put our necks on the block like we've just done today, then I think it's just going to make us stronger. I probably shouldn't underestimate what we can achieve. <laughs>